Hello. In this video, we'll contrast callbacks and promises. They are two different and yet similar programming patterns. They are both in line with asynchronous processing, but they are different in purpose and scalability. The typical use case for promises is that they wait for resources to finish loading. The typical use case for callbacks is to hide complex code in functional programming and event processing, for example, on button clicked, on route matched, etc. In addition, callbacks are well suited for synchronous processing. Both use cases have in common that an operation is started and a result is returned at a later point in time, reporting back a value or state from another place in the code. A promise is an object representing the result of an asynchronous operation. It can be fulfilled or rejected after it was resolved. Promises can be chained or processed in a bundle. Here we have an example in the app.controller in the master detail app generated from the master detail template in SAP Web IDE. This dot get owner component get model metadata loaded then fn set app not busy. The function fn set app not busy, which is actually a callback, should only then be executed when the promise metadata loaded of the odata model is successfully resolved. If the promise is rejected, the function won't be executed. A callback, in general, is a function that is passed as an argument into another function and is called, synchronously or asynchronously, to complete an action. As I already mentioned, a typical use case for callbacks is to hide complex code in functional programming and event processing. So basically, any situation that goes beyond one-way state programming with pending, fulfilled, rejected processing. In addition, synchronous operations are well suited for callbacks. Beware of too many nested callbacks, however. They can bloat your code and make it hard to follow, refactor or test. So much for the background. Let's compare the two patterns with a simple scenario. Imagine you work with an air carrier system and you have three data models in your app that you need to load data for transactional data, currency exchange rates, and flight data. First, let's look at how we can fill our three data models by means of the callback pattern. By the way, all code samples I'm showing here in Web IDE are linked as code snippets in the description underneath this video. We can see three callback functions, each representing a data request to the server. The timeout emulates the time a real data request would take. The first callback will take 1.2 seconds, the second 5 and the third 2. Then we can see three flags, one for each callback, that will indicate when its respective callback is done. The block following this declaration deals with invoking and checking the callbacks to enable parallel processing. The result is then produced in the already function at the bottom. Now let's run the code. In the console, we can monitor the total time our processing takes. You can see that it's about 5 seconds. Remember that network traffic and server communication can cause a few time lags. The 5 seconds mean the time to execute the entire pattern corresponds to the time it took to process the longest running callback. Now let's compare this with the promise pattern. We can see that this code snippet is much shorter and much more readable. That's because this use case is the home turf for promises. Instead of flags and more functions checking various states, we only have the promise.all statement. This statement gathers the fulfillment values of all promises and displays them. Callbacks get a chance to shine with our next example. Here we can see how callbacks can make use of each other and that we can return any value we want. Function 1 contains a variable and a task. The contents of the value should be output to the web page. We embed function 1 into function 2 with the arguments footprint of val1 and callback. When we now call function 2, we pass the values as parameters into function 1, triggering the task function 1 is set to do. 
As a result, we can see the value from function 2 getting output to the web page. So we can see that callbacks serve a more general purpose. Let me summarize our result. If applied correctly, each pattern has its own particular benefits. With an eye on performance and code complexity, you should now be able to spot if these patterns are used in the right context. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.